Hey, I'm Joel. This is a overview video of Roland's Xenology Pro software synthesizer. It's not going to be a video on synthesis, it's going to be an overview video of the synthesizer itself. So if you get lost or don't know what a term means or whatever, there's heaps of resources out there on YouTube, online. But yeah, without further ado, let's get started. So this is what it looks like when you open it up. You've got uh, the edit button here, which opens up the access to the actual synth engine itself. But we'll close that for now. You've got menu here, zoom, so you can scroll, zoom in and out. Uh, clear MIDI control mapping. So if I right click a parameter here and I say learn MIDI CC, then I move a knob on my MIDI controller. I can then edit and modulate that parameter. If I hit menu, clear MIDI control mapping, I'm now turning the same knob that I just mapped it to and nothing's happening. So voice limit here, so this is like a CPU usage saver. So if you have it on light, it's not going to limit the voices of the synth. Uh, if you have it on heavy, it's going to obviously heavily limit the voices to, to save CPU. So while you're working, maybe consider having that on if you're using a lot of software synths and you've got a lot of stuff happening uh, in your track. But, of course, when you're bouncing it out down to stems, you want to put voice limit on light. You can flip the scroll direction. I think this is actually only available on Mac uh, for, like, trackpads and such. But, yeah, it does what it says it does. Authentication. And then you've got help here, which is the direct access to the manual, which is super handy. And, yeah, and then about. That's just this, about the software, the version, et cetera, et cetera. You've got keyboard here, which opens up the keyboard. So if I'm playing notes on my MIDI controller, you can see which notes you're playing, so that's handy. And then you've got the master effects section here. It's got a bunch of different master effects here, different filters, all sorts of crazy stuff. So this section here, this is the preset name. This is the bank name. This is the sound engine. This is the assign. So if you've got a bass sound or a, or a string sound or a synth sound, that's going to be there. Write is like your save as function overwrite is like your save function you can change the master tuning of the synth so like if you're one of those 432 hertz people go for it uh, you've got master volume here you've got your master uh, left and right peak indicators here so this little light will light up if it's peaking and then that's your left and your right output volume so you've got your mono switch here so you play chords without it switched on and then obviously with mono switched on only the last note that you played will remain active You've got unison here, you can edit the unison value, I'll show you that in a sec. And then you have the legato switch here, and then portamento, which is your glide. So if we put mono on, and you can change the time of the portamento, again I'll show you that in a sec. So we've got the master cutoff here, master resonance, uh, master attack, Master release and then vibrato. So that's it for your master controls there. So if we press edit here, it's going to open up this big synth engine here. So this is where the fun and the magic really happens. So this is your structure up in the top right here. Roland uses a system called partials. So we have partial one, two, three, and four. So when this button is set to off, uh, you can use all four partials as their own synth and run them independently of each other. But if you have sync activated, you can have partial two as a slave to partial one and then partial four as a slave to partial three. So that's really fun there. Uh, you've got the ring modulating option here. Uh, we have cross modulation here and then cross modulation two. Uh, again, any, any clar further clarification of this menu help bring up the menu. It's got a few things in there. But YouTube will help explain a bunch of things. So each partial has an oscillator selection control, of course. It has pitch control and envelope. It has LFO. It actually has, each partial actually has two LFOs. And the LFO can be assigned to the pitch, the filter, and the amplitude envelope, which is really cool. You can get a whole lot of different stuff going on independently of each other and, you know, it's crazy. Two master LFOs for each partial, but you can have different amounts for the filter and pitch and amp. Awesome. 
Then, of course, you have the filter control here uh, with a bunch of different types here. We'll get into that shortly and the envelope there. And then we have the amp slash EQ, the amplitude. So, yeah, uh, tactic case, sustain, release. And then you have a little EQ in there that you can sculpt your, sculpt your sound just a little bit. So when we have partial one selected or two or three or four, you can see all of these elements on the screen at the same time. But if you want to edit the, let's say you had four different sounds going and you want to see all the pitch together. If you just click pitch, you can see all four on screen at the same time. Super handy. Same with your oscillators, uh, LFO, filter, and the amp and EQ. For this, we're just going to use one for now. So we'll hit partial one here. So looking at the looking at this master control section here, uh, we've got visual edit and pro edit. So I'm not going to go into the pro edit. I'll touch on it a, a little bit, but you've got full hands-on control of every single thing you could think of in here. It's it's crazy for all the different partials. You've got so many different things you can edit here. It's absolutely nuts. But if we go back to visual edit mode here, so we've got some common controls. So we've got portamento time, which is your glide time. So if we put mono on and portamento here, we can hear. That's fun. We've got the analog feel here. Uh, so I'll turn mono off. I'm going to turn this oscillator to a saw wave for now so we can hear. So it's just a C minor chord. And then we bring in the analog feel. It's designed to emulate the like an old out of tune or an old detuned analog synth. So you, that's a good way to add, add some analog feel really easy. You've got the master course tune here. So this changes the tuning of all four partials together. Fine tune, of course. If we activate unison here, we can we've got the unison detune and size control. So bringing the detune all the way up. Sounds like an angry, angry swarm of bees. Uh, we can change the unison size here. So minimum two, of course, because any less than that would just be no unison. Uh, so unison size. Get some pretty crazy sounds going on there. All right, let's look at the oscillator section. If we have partial one selected and we go down to the oscillator selector here, uh, we, the first thing we have is PCM by default, and that stands for pulse code modulation. So basically it uses samples as the basis of the synthesis. So by default we have this piano sound. So if we click the, the name here, it opens up this wave browser and we have a plethora of different sounds in here. So all these realistic uh, sounds, because they, they, are, they are real instruments that have been recorded and sampled and then put into a synthesizer. So you are actually hearing real instruments, which is super cool. All sorts of different sounds, as you can see, piano, electric piano, keyboard, organ. I'll give you a little taste. You also have uh, different synths that have been, different uh, waveforms that have been sampled. So we have like the Moog saw, Prophet 5 saw, the TB303 saw. Uh, all these different sounds here. Uh, we've also got some really cool synth sounds. So like these uh, detune slash layer sounds. So like super saws. So many different sounds here. Like this... Xenology Pro really is a, a one-stop shop for pretty much all of your sound needs. It's crazy. So obviously all your different like kicks, electric kicks, snares, etc. So you can build drum kits from scratch here or you can use preset drum kits. So to do that, we, we would click this section here. Down on the side, you've got drums here. So if we had like a uh, 909... My terrible finger drumming but there we go uh, so let's just go back to initial tone by selecting all user initial tone there so yeah that's the wave browser so you'll notice here it's got a um, piano 1l so if it's got an l there that means there's a corresponding right to it so we can hit if we play it in mono 
we can hear that. Or if we hit stereo, we can hear a stereo version of it. So that's super handy. They don't, not, not every sample in here has that, um, but a lot of them do. Uh, a lot of the strings, etc. So if we go to string ensemble 1L, just going to set it back to mono and then to stereo. Instantly widens that. That's super handy. Down the bottom left here, we have the wave gain. So it increases and decreases by six decibels, which um, an increase of six decibels doubles the volume and decrease halves the volume. So that's really cool. Gives you that gain control there for each partial. That's it for the PCM. So the next section is VA, virtual analog. So here's where you've got your really like build it from scratch style synthesis. So we've got a saw wave here, a square wave, Triangle wave, sine wave, uh, we have the ramp wave here, Juno, which is a modulated sawtooth, a triangle variation two, triangle variation three, and then a sine wave variation. So just leave it on sawtooth there, so we can invert it. Uh, again, wave gain, increase and decrease by 6 dBs. So you have the pulse width here. This effect is produced when the waveform is deformed by varying the duty cycle of the pulse width. That's read straight from the manual. So if we can see what that does. So we can get um, hybrids like uh, waves that are between a sawtooth and a triangle. And we can actually modulate that using, oh, by the way, 64 is the center here. So you can see 127, zero, and 64 is in the middle. So we can actually send the pulse width modulation depth to LFO2. So let's quickly go to LFO here. So uh, we got LFO2. We can send the pulse width depth to that. So when I increase this amount, it's going to send this, basically do this, based on the speed of the LFO2. Then of course we can change the speed of the LFO. So that's fun. Uh, we also have the fat control here, and the fat control boosts the low frequency region of the wave form. Unfortunately, you can't modulate that with an LFO, but what you can do is you can right click, learn MIDI CC, turn a knob on your MIDI controller. And do some crazy stuff there. So that's super cool. And right click and then you can forget MIDI CC 84. Next we have PCM sync. So pulse code modulation sync straight out of the manual. It says that our PCM sync is effective if specified as slave when the structure is sync. Uh, in brackets, the sync modulated partial is one or three. So yeah, one one becomes the slave of two, and three becomes the slave of four. I think I have that right. But yes, so that's that. These are only these are only. Now you can use them as an individual sound if you want. So if we have partial one selected, or if we have sync applied. And we have partial two selected as, let's say. Now, when we change the pitch of partial two. It's going to control the pitch of partial one. If you don't know what sync is, look it up. Um, I'm not the best at explaining it, but uh, yeah. So that's what PCM sync is. Then we have the super saw here. So it's like a bunch of saw waves stacked on top of each other and detuned slightly. So we can change the detune amount. So your classic 90s synth. Bring back 90s trance. Uh, and then uh, of course we have the wave gain as well. And then we have the noise generator. So just white noise. That's fun. So that's it for the oscillator section. Moving on to LFO. So we have LFO1, LFO2. They have all the same controls within each of them, but you've just got two separate LFOs for each partial. And if you forget which partial you're on, you can see up here, or you can see here, here, etc. So the different LFO waves that we have to work with, we have a sine wave. Let's just send the pitch to LFO1. And let's go back to a saw wave. 
Mm-hmm. So that's a sine wave. And this is a triangle wave. We have a sawtooth wave. We have a sawtooth wave with negative polarity, so inverted. We have a square wave. Random, that's random. Gets a bit weird. And we have the trapezoidal uh, wave here. So if we zoom in on it here, or you can just click and drag on here actually, uh, we can see what that looks like there. So it holds on the ups and downs. We have the sample and hold wave. We have a chaos wave. We have a modified sine wave. So from the from the manual it says the amplitude of a sine wave is randomly varied once each cycle. And then we have the step LFO. So the step LFO is really cool. So what we can do is we can just draw in a um, LFO amount here. But what we can actually do is in each of these steps, we can change the shape. So if we just change a bunch of these little parameters here. If I get rid of the pitch, and I'm just going to send the filter frequency to the LFO. You can hear, you can use it kind of like a step sequencer for, um, you know, uh, amplitude or filter or pitch. So that's really, really cool. Uh, we can back out of that here. If we hit tempo sync, we sync the division of the LFO to the master tempo. Then we can have anything from four bar cycle to a six, uh, 164th triplet note cycle. If we turn tempo sync off, it's just free sync. So let's just go back to a sine wave. Key trigger is uh, the LF, if you have key trigger on, that way whenever you press the key, the LFO starts again each time you hit the key. I'll turn the time down. But if we have key trigger off, every, the LFO just keeps going in the background, and then when we when we hit the key, it just comes in at wherever it's up to on the LFO. Uh, so we have the delay time, which is how long it takes from note on to the LFO starting. Then we have fade time, which is how long it takes the LFO to get to maximum amplitude. It's a bit of fun. And then we have the offset. So if let's keep going with the filter here. So where we're sending the filter to LFO one. So then this center point here is where the filter cutoff is. So if we bring the offset up, then the bottom of the modulation is going to be this point here and if we turn the offset all the way down then the top of the modulation is going to be this point. So I'll bring the fade time down. And then yep LFO2 is exactly the same you just have all the same features in here and you can customize it independently of LFO1 so that's pretty cool. Then we have the pitch control down here. So this is the envelope, we'll get to that in a sec. So there's your coarse tuning. Uh, we have the fine tune. Random tune, so that's going to be applied every time you hit the key. Uh, we can send the pitch to LFO1 or LFO2 or both. So you can have some weird, crazy stuff going on there. I won't bore you with those sounds, but play around with that for sure. Then we have the envelope depth. So we can use these nodes here to change the pitch envelope. So by default, uh, it's just flat. But uh, if we change this around, when we press a note, it's going to send the pitch up and then down and then back to center, like so, over that amount of time. No, it's not until we change the envelope depth. So in, if we have a positive envelope depth, it's going to follow that line. If we have a negative envelope depth, it's going to do the opposite of that line. 
So if we bring this all the way up, it's going to fully apply this pitch change. But if we bring it negative, it's going to do the opposite. So that's a lot of fun. You've got release control over here. But you'll notice in the top left here, it's T1 and L1. So each node is L, an L value. And then the T value is the lines. So the L value is vertical and the T value is horizontal. So you can get a lot of flexibility with these uh, envelopes in here. So that the pitch, the filter and the amp all have their own envelope. But you can actually change this to a basic ADSR, Attack Decay Sustain Release setting. So to do that, we open Pro Edit here. And in Common, we should default to that. We scroll down. See it says Partial 1 ADSR Switch. So if we turn that on, Partial 1's envelopes, all of them, the pitch, filter and amp envelopes, they're all going to be now changing to ADSR. So you see it says Attack, Decay and then Sustain and Release. So that's if you prefer to work with the ADSR style, then that that's that's going to be the way to do it. I actually only found this out a couple of days ago, and it's been amazing. So I love it. You can do a lot more with it turned off because you've got more nodes to choose from. But if we turn it on, that's just more you're more basic. That's it for the pitch. So now we move on to the filter section. So we've got a bunch of different filter types here, which is really cool. The LPF, which is low pass filter. BPF, bandpass filter, um, all of which have a resonance control, of course. You've got HPF, high pass filter, PKG, which is your peaking filter. So that allows us to create like wah wah style effects. Um, you've got uh, LPF2, low pass filter 2. So that has half the sensitivity of the low pass filter. So the manual describes it as a warmer filter. Uh, and then we've got low pass filter three. Uh, low pass filter three, it's the sensitivity of the filter changes according to the cutoff frequency. So this is a nuance that will differ from low pass filter two, even with the same settings. So as we go lower, the cutoff becomes more drastic. And as we go higher, the cutoff is more relaxed. We can see it starts to adapt there as we get to the higher frequencies. So you'll notice that these six filters here have an, a 12 or 24 decibel cutoff. So you can see that the 12, uh, 24, sorry, is much harsher. It cuts out the frequencies above the point more dramatically than the 12. The VCF filter here has an 18 decibel slope as well. So that's kind of nice. There is op more options for that in the pro edit under filter here. Um, you can change the type. Yeah, but I won't go into that. If you know what you're doing, have some fun in here. If you don't, don't worry about it. Just use this here. So then we have these filters here, which are emulations of old classic filters. So the JP filter is a emulation of the Roland Jupiter. And then the MG is the Moog filter. The P5 is the old Prophet 5. So they all imitate old analog synths, which is really, really cool. I love the Moog filter, it's so nice. It is so warm. So is the P5, they're all beautiful. Uh, and then we have off, so that's a bypass, which is great. So of course, these controls down here, we have the cutoff filter frequency, we have resonance control, uh, and we have the send to LFO1 and LFO2. You can do them both, you can do neither of them. Now we have the filter envelope section. So if we go to the envelope here, you have your attack, decay, sustain and release controls because we changed the ADSR switch to on. I find it a bit easier to work like this. It's just me though. So if we apply the filter envelope and bring the decay right down, for example, and make sure the filter's down pretty low, we're going to get that classic sawtooth, uh, filtered sawtooth sound. So if you like me and love Psytrance, it's going to be your sort of Psytrance-y bass sound, just like that. But yeah, we can add attack to that. I'm sure you're probably familiar with that. Uh, if not, there's lots of videos out there on sort of how that works. In the filter envelope here, 
we've got this cut off key follow option here. So if we bring the filter down, uh, or about halfway, it should be fine. Um, if we hit cut off key follow here, the higher the filter frequency cut off is going to be. And then same with the velocity sensitivity. So that's how much of the cutoff is applied based on how hard we hit the key. So if we hit the key softly, it's going to be really, uh, the filter is going to be cut off. But if we hit the key hard, uh, so yeah, that's how you apply the filter envelope. So now we go over to the amp envelope, similar to the filter and pitch envelope we have control over the amplitude of the sound so the volume so by default it's going to sound like that but we can change the attack decay sustain and of course release Here we have an EQ as well, so if we click EQ and turn it on, we have a control of the low frequency, the mid frequency and the high frequency, as well as the Q or resonance of that mid frequency. So it just allows you to shape each partial um, independently of another rather than just having a master EQ on the whole thing. So we can, we've got control over that there, pretty straightforward. Back in the amp envelope here, we have the level control, so if we just bring that sustain up and attack back. That's the level control for the whole partial. Uh, we have pan, left, right, and somewhere in between. We also have velocity sensitivity, so that's how the sound reacts to the velocity that the key is or pad is pressed. Uh, so the more velocity sensitivity you have, the obviously the more velocity sensitive it will be. Uh, we can send it to LFO one. Uh, if we bring this estate up. And of course we can sell it to LFO2. So we've got this range control section here where we can split the keyboard up to behave differently based on uh, which octave we're playing in or how hard we're playing a key. So let's turn on second partial here and we're going to have a just put it on a square wave here and we're going to have that as the as the, the base notes and then we'll have partial one playing the lead melody on top so let's go in range control here on partial one and we'll bring the uh, cutoff to c4 middle c and then on range control for partial two we'll bring the cutoff down to c4 so we can hear that anything below c4 is going to be playing the square wave and anything above C4 is going to be playing the sawtooth. That's kind of cool. You can also have velocity changes, so like the higher up in the keyboard you go, the lower the velocity or the higher velocity will go. Um, there's going to be another video on this whole section at some point, but this is just sort of a basic overview. So we also have this matrix control section. There's going to be another video on this. I don't really, haven't really got my head around it yet, but basically you can have one parameter that modulates up to four other parameters by a positive or negative amount. And you can do that four times for each partial. It's a whole thing. Um, so don't worry about it at the moment. I'll get to it at some point in the future. Uh, you can also play drums in this synth as well. So if we open this up here and we go down to drums, uh, if we hit all over here, got a bunch of different drums, drum sounds. So let's go, let's just go at 909, because I'm right into like trance and techno right now. Get your 909 kit. You've got your drum kit loaded up here. You can change the level of everything, the panning of everything, attack. Decay and release, of course. You look, this 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 section requires a video of its own, but you've got all the all these classic rolling kits, uh, hybrids of the different uh, kits. You've got like you know EDM kits, drum and bass kits, uh, jazz kits. 
all real life samples it just it's super cool you've got literally everything that you need right here to make a whole song yeah so that's it for the overview as you can see this thing is a beast you can do so much with it i love it i hope you got something out of this there'll be more videos in the future thanks for watching